Okay, so now that we have seen the framework works for some sparse accelerator design, let's take a look at how exactly it performs its modeling. And at a high level, Time Loop V2 has three steps for modeling sparse tensor accelerators internally. The first step is the dense modeling stage where it does not care about the sparsity in the workload and perform a dense traffic analysis of the storage level and computes. The second step is what we call the sparse modeling where we actually post-process the dense traffic stats and apply the impact of the applied sparse optimization feature and analyze what is the final sparse traffic stats and then we perform a microarchitecture level modeling to get the final energy value based on the hardware attributes of the components in the architecture. So let's get started. First, let's look at the first step of our internal analysis, which is the analytical modeling for dense accelerators. And these types of modeling is already existing in our field, and time V1 is one of the example uh, framework that allows us to do analytical modeling for dense accelerators. So for our tutorial, I'm going to only talk at a high level about dense modeling. And if you're interested in learning more, you can definitely check out the Time V1 paper uh, from East Pass 2019. And also we have a Time Loop a V1 tutorial available online. Okay, so how do we perform analytical modeling for dense um, world? So basically, at the first step, we abstract the problem instance detail away. So as you can see in this slide, we have the exact problem instance of a matrix multiplication workload with A, B, and Z. And we, as you can see, we have all the instance of sparse values in the problem instance. However, because we don't care about the zero values in our dense analysis, we turn it into a problem instance shape. And this is because the analytical modeling does not examine the exact data for speed. Um, so what does the problem instance shapes look like? As you can see here, we're essentially only, um, we're only reserving the information about the dimensions and the sizes of each dimension for the tensors in the workload. So we only now know what is the, uh, I guess, number of rows and columns for each column for each tensor in this specific workload. Also, analytical modeling need to abstract architectural details away for the same reason, because we can't spend time on all these details. It takes a long time to simulate all these details, and our goal is to be fast, as fast as possible. So analytical modeling does not examine all these detailed architecture implementation. As you can see here, we're turning a detailed architecture design into a pretty abstract architecture topology uh, where we only we are only specifying the number of storage levels and the number of computes. So now we are ready to perform a analysis given the um, abstract architecture as well as a abstract workload. So what we do is we'll look at a mapping and analyze what is the traffic uh, that happened on this architecture during the run of a specific workload. So first, let's take a look at these four loops associated with the main memory. What they do essentially is to slice all this tensor A into multiple uh, subtensors. And for all of the parallel for loop, they will uh, cause the main memory to send the subtiles to the lower level buffers at the same time to do parallel processing as shown here. And of course, across time, you would receive different subtensors from this main memory. And this is what we call coordinate space tiling. Um, and we also have some for loops for the buffer level, where again, these for loop will tile the smaller subtensor in the buffer, and all of these tiles will be sent to the multiplication unit to perform the computation defined by the mapping. So we will do this for all of the tensors involved in our workload, and then we will have an idea of how all of these subtiles are traveled from memory levels to memory levels, and where are the compute it and how many compute has happened. So at a high level, we want to answer a lot of questions in order to 
get a understanding of the dense traffic involved in this architecture. So for example, which tensor is temporarily reused at each storage level, how much data is actually transferred between storage if, uh, for example, a tensor is not reused for a specific loop iteration, how many compute has happened, and etc. a lot of these questions. And with the answers to these questions, which will be derived in the analysis process, we want to essentially get the answers to uh, what, whether your mapping is valid, what is your energy efficiency, and how many cycles is spent. But we care about sparsity as we are looking at all these sparse tensor workloads and sparse accelerator architecture. So as you can see now, we have a um, sparse set of tensors sitting in the main memory. And all of these values are passed to the buffers uh, and compute unit. And because we are sparse tensor accelerators, we will be applying various types of sparse optimizations to each component in our architecture. The implementation of these optimization features can vary from one accelerator to another. And all we want to know is, given all these extra information about data, what is the impact of sparse optimization feature on the questions that we asked before? And this is what we want What a we want to achieve additionally to the dense analysis that's already existing in our field.